working with you. So for those who may be watching and are not familiar with brain balance centers, maybe they've heard of it. Um, Dr. Uh, blanking is the last name. Rillo. Yes, Malo. Yes, he's got a great book called Disconnected Kids. And that's part of that's part of his development here. But tell us a little bit. So a kiddo who comes in, what's what's a, a typical start look like for them? Do you assess them? Do they come in with a diagnosis? Are you diagnosing them? How does this work? Yeah. We don't diagnose kids. We're all about getting to the root and addressing it at the foundation. Um, a lot of families, it's kind of split. Some yeah. families come in already yeah. having labels. They need them so that they can have IEPs or 504s yeah. at the school for accommodations mm -hmm. and things like that. And others come because they want to avoid the label. Right. One, one of the things, sometimes they're necessary. I, I'm not like a, I'm not anti-label in all circumstances because it sort of, it defines what an issue is. And so people can address it. Right. But the issue is that if you rely on accommodations, you're not actually fixing anything. The mm -hmm. child is still churning and life doesn't always just roll out modifications for you. Right. You know, so th there's a there's an issue with that. And the other thing is, this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. 98 to 99 percent of adolescents and adults, and there have been several studies that have reported this, say that rejection sensitivity syndrome is present in them. Their, their happies are happier, but their their feelings of rejection are yes. even stronger. That's compelling to me. And 30% oh. and say that that is the most debilitating part of having different kinds of executive function disorders. ADHD is a subset of executive function. Um, and we talked before about how some things can mask as ADHD, even though yeah. that is a real thing, but it's really misunderstood. But a lot of these kids have difficulty separating what they do from who they are. Mm. And sometimes labels, and sometimes it's not even a medical label, it can even be the problem child right. or the slow learner. Even those kinds of labels transfer with them and they feel like they can't get away from them. And that's just another thing that can make them kind of give up the churn, they're churning, churning, yeah. churning. Without and that, progress, right? Yeah, and that gets frustrating because we're not getting to the root. Mm. And then the other thing is, man, people are, have already doomed me to act like this or, or learn like this, and so what's the point? Yeah, kind of like a self-fulfilling uh, It is prophecy, yeah. right? Yeah, and I, you know, to speak to that point, that is, I think one of the things that we connect the most on is, a diagnosis can be good because there there can be accommodations that are needed academically, right? You know, I, I get that there, there's that point, but oftentimes I'll get little kiddos in and they're just they're tied to that. Like I am this. It's their identity. Yes, and I and they they can't be separated, and so you know that's important. I, I think from multiple standpoints. One, I think what I like to touch about us as as clinics and centers. How do we address that? Like, you know, like, do you have a way of connecting with that child? Because for me, I don't ever try to bring up the diagnosis in front of them. I just speak to them. Yeah. Like, you know, like you need you know, to, any other kid. Yeah. We're huge on getting to know who this child is in their heart and soul. Yes, there we go. And and that is, they are a, they are a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a baseball player, even, but they're more than that. Yeah. They are their, their character, they're their heart, they're their thoughts, their motivations. Yeah. And now if, if kids have decreased proprioception, all sorts of sensory motor issues, the motor system and the sense of identity are so connected. The cerebellum communicates with the prefrontal cortex where all of our executive functions are. So if you even have clumsiness, that can lead to lack of identity or, yes. you, or proprioception. You don't feel your body the right way. But we intrinsic motivation is so important. Mm. So much of what kids have to do is extrinsically motivated. They don't want to do that math <laughs> assignment, you know. And through life, there's just so much of that. They might already feel out of control of their thoughts and their bodies. And now I have all these other things thrust on me that I'm struggling with. Yep. I'm running out of gas in my tank. And I don't care. I don't understand what's the point. Yeah. Why am I having to do this? And sometimes a, there's a better answer than because the teacher said so or because mom and dad <laughs> said so. I mean, there's some truth to that sometimes. But sometimes, how can I connect this to something that's important to them? Mm. You know, I don't want to do math. But... You, you you admire how daddy's a an accountant and right. this and so that starts internalizing <laughs> a motivation for doing it yeah. when, when you know what matters to them you first have to get them a sense of identity and so right. many things get in the way but once they do have that 
find ways to bring extrinsically motivated tasks that they must do to a place that matters for them. Yeah. The research is compelling yeah. about what a difference that makes. C connecting the internal and the external world. Um, 